rules or guidelines for determining oxidation numbers, ION, and the first rule is that any one element formulas, the element has oxidation number zero. So for one element formulas, the oxidation number is zero. And that's a zero, not an O, so I put a little slash through it. And now it's time for me to show you my little formalism for doing oxidation numbers. So uh, I put a little O in, and I, this is one line on your paper, and this is the next line on your paper. And my oxidation numbers always go directly under each of the elements. And sodium, by itself, zero. Chlorine, oxygen, oh, maybe not that exciting so far. But wait, it gets better or worse. Number two um, guideline is that monatomic ions, have oxidation number equals charge. And there's a lot of monatomic ions around here. So here's my setup. There's the lines on my paper that doesn't have lines. Perhaps yours does. Um, and let's see, so I have sodium. A monatomic means one atom ion. And this is, mm, so these ones are elements. Um, these ones are ions. And since the charge is plus one, the oxidation number is plus one. Since the charge is minus one, the oxidation number is minus one. And then when you get to an ionic compound, which we will mostly be dealing with, you go ahead and draw a line between them because each element will have its own oxidation number. And since this is just this, the same thing here, it's plus one. And since this is just the same chloride ion here, it's minus one. And that's why we need to know this, is because we'll have a lot of uh, ionic compounds that we'll be working with. Rule number three says that the in um, so the sum of the oxidation numbers. For all the atoms in a, uh, for all the atoms, must equal the charge and it sounded like I was going to say something else there but I think I'm just going to stick with the period there. Let's go ahead and do rule number four, guideline number four. And then we'll do all of these examples, or most of them anyway. In compounds, the oxidation number for hydrogen is plus one, always, except in hydrides when it is minus one. And there will be no hydrides in this course. In compounds, the oxidation number for oxygen is minus two, except in peroxides when it is minus one. And uh, I guess, let me just to be safe, if there's any hydrides or peroxides, I would tell you about this rule and tell you the oxidation number. Because what I want you to remember is plus one for hydrogen, uh, oxygen is minus two. Commit that to memory. Now uh, we're ready to do all of these. I am anyway. Hopefully you are. And now we're our two line, our method is really going to be tested and there is a method to my madness. So break up all the different elements and let's see if we can put, those are the only rules we're gonna have. Four rules, four guidelines. And so let's start with rule number four. Hydrogen is plus one. Wherever you see a hydrogen, write a plus one. Oxygen, oh, let's just do all the hydrogens, plus one. That's it. 
Whenever you see an oxygen, it's minus two. Minus two, and we have a lot of oxygens, like so. Okay, and I've sort of bent the lines here so I have enough space to write the oxidation number here for sulfur. Um, and let's go to a third color. So we'll have rule number four be red. So all we did was rule number four there. And I guess all the other rules we now have to call in here. But basically, actually, rule number three. Rule number three is, and let's show you how it works in water here, H2O. There are two hydrogens, two times one. So you do have to multiply the two times one to get plus two. There's one oxygen and it's minus two. And plus two minus two equals zero. And just to be clear, this is part of my process. This is nothing in this row is going to be the answer for the oxidation number. The oxidation number always goes up here. And the oxidation number is always for each one atom, even when there's two atoms. Each of those hydrogens is plus one, plus one times two is plus two. Now let's move on to sulfates. For sulfates, each oxygen is minus four. There are four of them, so that in part of my process equals minus eight, four times minus two. And I can see that there's a charge here. And so according to rule number three, that minus two charge is what everything has to add up to. Mm -hmm. And so now I can solve for x here and the equation becomes x minus eight equals minus two. You can add eight to both sides. And my eights on this side cancel and I'm left with, well, I'll put it up here, x equals plus six. So x equals plus six, I'll put my plus six here as my x. And since there's only one sulfur, that sulfur has an oxidation number of plus six, plus six. Can you see that? Plus six. Time to go back two pages. Remember when I mentioned that that's a hypothetical charge? It is not really plus six, truly, truly, but it is useful to think of it as plus six as we keep track of electrons moving from atoms to atoms. Anyway, so that's what I mean by hypothetical. Let's move on. For this one, we have two hydrogens, that's plus two. We have four oxygens, that's minus eight. There's no charge up here, so that means that the whole thing equals zero. And plus two plus some number, minus eight equals zero, and that number is plus six. And again, we have a sulfur that's plus six. One more time. So let's do our oxygens first, since that seems to be the easiest thing. We look at this and we're like, hmm, which, well, I have to know, there has to be somewhere in these four guidelines a rule about one of them because I would not ask you for two unknowns. We only can have one unknown at a time. And so now we go back to plus one monatomic ions. Sodium is always a monatomic ion. It will always be plus one. So, well... I had to go back to rule number two, so we'll still keep it in green. Each sodium is plus one. There are two of them, plus two. There's no charge up here, so the whole thing has to equal zero. And plus six, plus six. All of these sulfurs are plus six. Sulfur can be other things, but for these it's plus six. All right, so now let's get to some differences here. And we're gonna do uh, each of these uh, 
let's see, oxidation number. And this is my little system for keeping track of things. You don't have to use it, you can. Now we'll just do these three. Um, split them up, then do your hydrogens and your oxygens. Hydrogens are plus one, plus one. Oxygens are minus two, minus two. And when you get done with that, there may be some monatomic ions. Here there are not. But then you should have at most one thing that you don't know. Sometimes zero things. Like in water, there were zero things. But here there's one thing. In nitrogen, we have no rules about it. Chlorine, we have no rules about it. And sulfur, we have no rules about it. All of those are non-metals. Those are the things other than oxygen and hydrogen for which there are no rules. That's what we have to figure out. Let's do ammonia first. There are three of them, that's plus three. There's no charge. That means that the nitrogen has to be minus three and minus three. So if the question was, what is the oxidation number on nitrogen? Your answer would be minus three. High nitrogen in ammonia, that is. Now let's do uh, nitrous acid. We have two of these, so that's minus four. We have plus one still for the hydrogen because there's only one. I guess we can zoom in on this a little bit. There we go. And the whole thing equals zero because there's no charge up here. This time it's plus three and plus three. And so you're seeing that the oxidation numbers, those don't add up, right? Because they don't account, account for how many atoms of each kind there are. But the process part down here, and I've abandoned my color scheme, these do always add up because that's part of my process is to make them add up. Last but not least, there are two oxygens. There's no charge. Nitrogen is plus four. And so you can see that nitrogen can change from minus three to plus four in different compounds. Give these two a shot. I will be looking at those to make sure that you've done them. And now let's move on to some carbon containing compounds because carbon, another non-metal, has many different oxidation numbers that are possible. And we'll do with some of these, and the rest of them will be for you to do. Uh, let's do uh, CH4. For CH4, we have a rule about hydrogen. It's always plus one. That's four of them, so that's plus four. You can see that on nine, not all of these compounds, there's no charge, so all of these will be equaling zero. That means this is minus four, and the oxidation number on this carbon is minus four. Things are getting a little weird here because I have hydrogens in two different places. You can keep them like that, but I like to go CH4O. Gang them all up, and then work on the problem like that. I have plus one for hydrogen. I have minus two for oxygen. How many do I have? There we go. And then this equals zero. And mathematically, this is challenging for me, <laughs> right? And so I understand if it is for you. So this is plus four and minus two. This has to be a minus two. And then I double check my math. Minus four plus four does equal zero. And this is minus two. I will let you do the remainder of the three over here. I wanna jump down to C3H8 and C2H4O2. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. Now, the process is always the same. We'll get a slightly weird answer this time. Nitrogen, oxidation number, plus one. 
There are eight of them. The charge on this beast is zero. That means, and here's where the math comes in, the minus eight makes this math correct. Now there are three of them. That means that the oxidation number here has to be minus eight divided by three because they have to add up to minus eight and there's three of them. So this is minus eight thirds as your oxidation number. And when you put this into the homework, this or other ones, you're going to have to put in minus 2.67 or 2.667, either one should work. But you can't put in, I don't know if you can put in two point, minus 2.6, but minus 2.67 will work, I know. So just get it, so I guess carry two decimal places when you put these in. And yes, this is a fractional oxidation number. It is a hypothetical charge, remember, and it will still help us keep track of electrons. We will see that shortly. All right, let's do one more. So C2H4O2. At least this has got some oxygen in it. So let's see. Um, hydrogen's always plus one. Oxygen's always minus two. Minus four, plus four. There's no charge up here, so it must equal zero. It's okay, that is a zero, and that means that the oxidation number on these two carbons is zero. And now, I think I've thrown at you every weird thing you can see for oxidation numbers. If you see anything weirder, let me know.